Support for Stepping Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde, and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Poppy Tooker. Thank you, Poppy, for stopping oh, last week. Thank you, host Peggy. Of Glad the to radio see you. <laughs> thank you. Host of the radio program, Louisiana Eats, airing twice weekly on WWNO. We're so thrilled. Artist Garland Robinette, former longtime WWL TV anchor and, of course, WWL radio host, but he is here to discuss his artwork and a project for a very worthy cause. Welcome to our Thank table. Thank you. It's sir. so strange to hear artist. Artist, <laughs> yes. Like artist with like an exclamation it. point. Yes. And Alan Mason of theatercriticism.com. Hello, Mr. Alan. Back at you. But, uh, <laughs> first up, puppy. Anybody who knows anything about my wild career and checkered past knows how closely I have been affiliated with the Crescent City Farmers Market. Of course, back in 2007, that was my very first cookbook. And they have had so many different iterations of fundraisers over the year. We've gone from very fancy to not so fancy to at the market and off-site. Well, there's a new one this year that I'm really excited about. They're having a backyard barbecue that's going to take place at Central City Barbecue on South Rampart Street Sunday, October 7th from 4 until 7 p.m. What's really nice about this, there's many nice things, but it's a family event. This is designed for the whole family to come. There will be cocktails from Cure and Pal's Lounge. There'll be beer from Urban South and Second Line Brewing. Food from Central City Barbecue, of course, but the others, oh my, Boucherie, Carmo, Clancy's, Echo's Pizza, Gabrielle, Lovey, Margie's Grill, Revel and Saba. Frenchie's food truck will be there. There'll be sweets from Beth Biondo and bittersweet confections. There'll be music and there'll be really fun children's activities like pumpkin painting and mask making. So early purchase until October 3rd. So get your tickets, children $5, adults $60. The price goes up a little after that. Then coming this weekend, the third annual Beignet Fest. And of course, this is a free fest that takes mm -hmm. place actually next Saturday, mm -hmm. October the 6th from 10 until 6 on the City Park Festival grounds. 19 vendors with 30 different kinds of beignets. And these are some crazy things. Girls Gone Vegan will have vegan <laughs> and gluten-free beignets, and they're also serving tomato, basil, garlic beignets. Katie's will have crawfish beignets with cheddar, mozzarella, caramelized onions, jalapeno aioli. La Via Rose Cafe is going to be serving Nutella beignets and boudin Ooh. beignets. Oh my gosh. Loretta's, okay. who won best overall last year with their crab beignet. Everybody knows their yumminess from Jazz Fest. They'll be there with praline, chocolate, and crab meat. Luca Eats has an Oreo beignet, off the hook Creole catering. Well, they've got a mac and cheese beignet, a lobster beignet with a shrimp <laughs> beurre blanc, and strawberry caramel and white chocolate beignets. The Ruby Slipper will be there with Cochon beignets, Banana Foster beignets, and Vietnamese coffee beignets. That sounds mm. so good. And Snola will be serving a beignet snowball. <laughs> I'm not sure how <laughs> that see goes. That one. Gotta, Gotta see, see that, that one. Yeah. But anyway, it's going to be great fun next Saturday. Big, big news. Monday, the WYES Season of Good Taste Dinners go on sale. The reservations begin that they sell out quickly. So there's only six of them this year, taking place from October through January. The dinner prices range from $75 to $125. And the Oh, hosting restaurants, Trinity, Susan Spicer's Rosedale, Tommy's, Gotro's, the Bourbon House, and the Pelican Club. So you can go to WYES, 
You can go early and see the full menus, but on Monday, you can make your reservations. So mark your calendar, set your clocks, <laughs> do it Monday. Don't miss out. It's delicious and it's great fun. And those prices include everything. Mm -hmm. That's what's so nice. Yes, too, tax and tips you, inclusive. Yeah, everything. Nice. But thank you. And of course, all proceeds go to WIS. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we certainly appreciate. And speaking of good causes, we have Garland here, who's a good thank cause. You. Okay. <laughs> We're glad to have him. So my but, debate. <laughs> well, we're so delighted, but um, wearing your artist hat, and that is what you're doing uh, these days, and we're so glad. You have come up with a wonderful way to raise funds for a very good cause, but also let us set, set the stage. One of the things that you've been doing in the more recent past are these images of a juju, juju dolls. Yeah. Explain that, sir. Okay. Well, it, it's kind of a long story made short. Um, through the years, I've, I've done portraits. When I go to a restaurant, I usually take a ink pen or a pencil, put it between two pencil, two fingers, and if they have paper tablecloths, I just kind of trace the figure and then I make things off of it. And invariably, waiters, waitresses come by and say, I like that, can I have it? They tear it, deck it away. So between portraits that are very intense and very difficult, I said, you know, I, I need something to, to get back into the emotion of painting. So I took music, Poppy took her radio show, <laughs> and, and began to experiment with these figures. And when I did them, they, they looked a little bit scary. I didn't really like them. And I said, what if I make them friendlier, and what if I make a realistic, classic type painting on the breastplate. And then it dawned on me, I, I grew up in the swamp, literally. Boutique. Uh, uh -huh. West of the Solomons, till I was 13, I didn't move to the big city of Booty. <laughs> till I was 13, I was in the swamp. My mother was very Cajun, her name is Mouton. <laughs> and uh, any time I did something good, which was seldom, she would say, oh, my chatty Rob, little Rob, you did good juju, which means you did a good thing, you'll get good luck. And I said, why don't I, why don't I start doing good luck figures? And then I thought, this city has been very good to me. I'm in my sixth career, janitor, TV anchor, <laughs> senior vice president, corporation, own my own company, radio talk show, artist. So it's been very good to me. Why don't I do these figures and try to partner with different organizations that are trying to do good, good juju, bring them good luck. That's that's how it all went up. Well, let's show this first one because that's the one we're really focusing on. This, this, this one is, uh, is um, this one is for um, Kelsey Favreau, wonderful lady, died in 2009 of a brain tumor. Her family and and backers want to bring a pediatric neuro oncologist to New Orleans. So the family with children that have brain problems. Don't have travel out of state, the expense and the trauma of leaving. So they want to bring a pediatric neuro-oncologist here. They got a five-way, 5K run walk, Sunday, October the 7th, October shelter, I mean, Ottoman shelter, number 10. And we divide this figure for people that like LSU, that they like <laughs> the Tigers. And they can buy this figure and most of the funds are going to go to this yes. project. And you've got it on um, a different... Um, this, this, this is, is called a, uh, it's not Playboard. Quite canvas. Playboard. Okay. And, and most people think they're going to get a canvas. Mm -hmm. We've got people from all over the world that get these, uh -huh. and we get videos like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> what the hell is this? You know, it's, it's almost like ceramic. Right. So uh -huh. you can... Just hang yeah, it without but you also framing. have prints and, and stuff too. So pretty much go to your website and you can 
purchase these yes. and the proceeds are going to go. For a good yeah, cause. For a very good cause. But let's, <coughs> we also want to show those some other jujus that you have that really represents uh, the culture. And I know these you've got, look at this one. Uh -huh. These are copies of the original on canvas. Mm -hmm. And Is that the Buff Gras? The Buff Gras, absolutely. And I absolutely. can guarantee you, you put these next to the originals, you can't tell yeah. the difference. And you got, what's the, we're going to show a few, a streetcar Those. named Juju. Mr. Yep. This is one, then Mr. Fat Tuesday. I love yeah. that. <laughs> We'll have to do that with the Tennessee Wings Festival. Oh. Second line, here we right. go. And so, and, and then this is not oh, a juju. Right. <laughs> this portrait. is a magnificent uh, example of your portraiture, which is very Thank much uh, something that you do. And, and that is your daughter, That's who is my now daughter. 21. You know, you know what happened with this? <laughs> I realized my wife and I were going to have an anniversary. Um, my wife and child and mother-in-law were at the beach, and I was supposed to join them. Came down off of a uh, corporate job, sat down to watch television and said, oh my God, I don't have a present for the anniversary. I went downstairs, and I did this on wrapping paper. It's about this big. And I did it in five hours. Whoa. Oh. And, and when I arrived, I told my wife, I've been working on this for months. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But anyway, Girl, it how old were you when you had your child? 54. He's looking really oh. good, isn't he? Yeah. Four. <laughs> That's wonderful, though. And she's now 21, you said? Yes. Wow. Yes. wow. Help me, mother, please. She's 21. <laughs> and we wanted to show one more of the incredible portraits. And of course, look at Pete. Uh -huh. <gasps> Pete Fong. Uh -huh. This is uh -huh. a quick story. Um, he came to the farm to, to sit for this. Mm -hmm. And he played practical jokes on me every time he came. So when his family came to get it, I did a horrible portrait that kind of looked like him. Put it on the easel, put a black velvet over it, then I put the real one over it, and I hid a film camera. <laughs> and I, I, I revealed the really bad one. So what do you think? And the whole family's on video going, <laughs> I said, well, you can all like that, how about this? Yeah. And he had some few good words for him, but that painting went under Katrina. Wow. Katrina oh, took it. Oh, no. Yep. Oh. But if the family's watching, mm -hmm. We can do a gicle okay. that'll make it exactly the oh, same. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, well, once again, congratulations on what Thank you're you. doing. And we want to have you back for more stories and for Thank more you. show Thank and you. tell. And we're thrilled that you're here. And New Orleans Magazine's Quiz Queen Julia Street has a question for us. Last time, Barbara Krieger gave us the name of a character of Popeye's Fried Chicken was named after, as well as the movie he was in. We are talking about Jimmy Popeye Doyle, played by Gene Hackman in the movie, of course. The French Connection. Now, tonight's question. Give me four area festivals named after food and the community that they're located in. That's a pretty good one, don't you think? That's a good one. one. Yeah. Email your answers to stepping out at wys.org. Our prizes a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine, two packs of napkins with the messages Kate Shiraz, Shiraz, and Pinot Noir and V yeah. from, our, from our friends at wearablevegetables.com, and a pair of free admission pass to either the Audubon Zoo, or Aquarium of the Americas, or the Butterfly Garden and Insectarium. By the way, the Insectarium is having its 10th anniversary oh, <laughs> celebration. Yeah. To, uh, that's tomorrow and Sunday. Visit Audubon's website to see a list of events happening at the celebration. And you know, you can go to WYS.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events, including both the Gretna Heritage Festival and the Alligator Festival happening this weekend. You can also link to our WYS YouTube channel to see our program. In 1977, excuse me, 1877, uh, New Orleans-born Louise Romain founded a local monastery for discalced Carmelite nuns on North Rampart Street, where it remained for over a century, before moving to Covington, Louisiana in 1995. With little more than a week away, members of this contemplative order are busy Busily preparing for their annual Mass of the Roses in honor of St. Teresa of Lisieux. Here's an encore presentation narrated by Marcia Cavanaugh.
Snuggled under tall pines and swaying crepe myrtles live the Carmelite nuns of Covington. Since moving north of Lake Pontchartrain from New Orleans in 1997, this has been home. We've been here for about 22 years. And uh, believe it or not, we've been working for 22 years trying to build this whole uh, little area. This is really a little jewel for us. Here, the nuns live a life of solitude and prayer as they follow the vocation established by St. Teresa of Avila. So her big message is one of love. She wanted to be love at the heart of the church, meaning that there would always be a group of lovers of God who would remain with him. And we imitate her and we try to live that. St. Therese is known as the Little Flower, and she promised to send roses from heaven as a sign of her love and um, protection of those who honor her. The Mass of the Roses is the way that we describe our Mass in honor of St. Therese of Lisieux, the Little Flower, and we have this Mass every year in her honor around her feast day, which is October 1st. This year it will be October 1st, is Sunday, so we'll celebrate it on that day. The Mass is at 9.30 that morning. But this Mass offers a celebration unlike any other. Well, this is our only outdoor Mass, and so we're able to invite many more people. We can accommodate around four or 500 people that day. We have a distribution of roses for the people who come. We will be accepting donations during the Mass, obviously, but after the Mass, the sisters will have on display different baked goods that we've prepared. So we'll be, we'll be making cookies and granola, pecan pies, and have all of those available for sale after the Mass. We'll also have dolls that the sisters have made, little Carmelite dolls, and some other sew, sewn items like aprons and table runners, different crafts like that. We do expect a large crowd for our Mass and we would hope that people can carpool or use the shuttle service that will be available here. The Carmelite nuns of Covington are used to living a cloistered life, but as they prepare for the Mass of the Roses, they are looking forward to welcoming hundreds of guests to their monastery. So we definitely try to live a life of silence and solitude, and at the same time, a, a, a life of love. We really try to love, love each other and love everyone that comes. It is so rewarding. <laughs> so it's so very dear. Thanks, uh, very special thanks to producer Don Smith uh, for that wonderful feature. The Carmelite nuns, we showed this, of course, last year, and so they mentioned October 1st, but this year's Mass is actually October 7th. It's the Mass of the Roses starting at 9 a.m., refreshments after. Visit their website in Covington carmel.org for more information. And now, Alan. Well, I tell you, I've, I've heard so much good things here at the table so far. I was thinking about Poppy with the with the Ben Gay, uh, Ben, ben Gay's, but not Ben Gay again, Ben, ben Gay. Gay. Yeah. That's yes. what I was thinking about. But, you know, uh, we've got so much going on right now that's taking us away from theater. And for those of you who are mired in the mundane machinations of partisan politics, as you've seen it acted out on TV this week, might I make a simple suggestion? <coughs> Get over to the Sanger Theater and take my prescription to bring you out of your doldrums and your depression because Disney's Aladdin is on stage there. Based on that successful Alan Menken and Howard Ashman animated classic by Disney, it includes lyrics by Tim Rice and Chad Begelin, who wrote the book. Although Aladdin is played by Clinton Greenspan and Princess Jasmine is played by Lisa de Guzman, they're the leads, but the show is really stolen by none other than Trevor Dion Nicholas, who plays the genie. Now, in numbers like Friend Like Me and Prince Ali, Nicholas is front and center the man in charge. He dances with the rest of the ensemble, he prances when it's necessary and mugs to the audience and breaks that uh, imaginary fourth wall. It's not too imaginary with him there in place, though. <laughs> Aladdin is aided uh, in his search for love, fame, and fortune by a band of best buds. They're thieves, of course, Babcak, Omar, and Kasim, and they all have their share of comic pratfalls and 
choreographed sword fighting, especially in that song High Adventure in Act Two. Now, I've seen the original on stage at the New Amsterdam Theater, and I can tell you this production retains much of the magic that was there on Broadway. I still can't figure out how that magic carpet works <laughs> because uh, it's part of the, of the magic of the whole yeah. presentation. Alan, really I can't necessary. either. I saw it last night and at the same time. We I, don't, I, I don't have no idea. It's not necessary to know how it works, just that it works, and it is indeed a magic carpet. <laughs> yeah. I really was enthralled at this really multi splendid production. I really recommend it very highly. Big orchestra and sure to transport you to a whole new world, at least for the next 10 days. That's Aladdin at the Sanger <laughs> Theater. Now, over to the French Quarter at the Curl Up and Die Salon. <laughs> there are several people involved in what appears to be murder and mayhem. That's sheer madness. Now, this is by Paul Porter and it's directed by Chris Shaw. It's billed as America's a uh, hilarious whodunit, and indeed, it's one of the most clever of these kinds of shows that I've ever seen. The cast of cut-ups are led by John Deddy, and he, we last saw him, if you remember, as Gaston in the Rivertown production of Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Casey Groves, an eminent oh, actor, plays a mysterious oh, man okay. with a briefcase. Glenn Boyer is a flamboyant beautician, and Jonathan Damare is a young detective. Now, the female cast members are led by Janet Shea as an aging socialite, and Allison Logan plays another stylist there. The script, again, is very clever, very funny. The original work, by the way, started back on stage in Germany back in the 60s. Mm. It opened in Boston in 1980, and it's been playing there ever since on weekends, 12,000 plus performances later. The audience, of course, helps the detectives who are on stage solve and determine, if you will, who the murderer is. There's a lot of interaction with the crowd, and that really makes the show so much fun. Uh, Jim Annis will run on the weekends only for an entire month more, and I would love to uh, see if it's extended for a lot longer. I'd love to see if it'll go for another 12,000 performances, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, it's playing through October the 28th, at the very least, at the West Wego Performing Arts Theater. Coming up next month, it'll be the 20th anniversary of the kidnapping and beating of Matthew Shepard, something that we have to really consider uh, a hate crime because Shepard, of course, was gay. Now, the Laramie Project, uh, being presented by Michael McKelvey, he directs a very thoughtful and very moving work with 14 actors who uh, represent at least two dozen of the uh, residents of Laramie, Wyoming. Uh, these are the residents who knew Matthew or were witness to the events surrounding his death. The cast includes a number of actors that McKelvey has personally worked with, either at Summer Lyric, which is, of course, where he's the artistic director, or with his own production company. Now, these include Kiri Armstead, Bo Bratcher, Elise McDaniel, Hannah Rochelle, Matt Reed, and Eli Tim, plus eight others, of which I... I all do a great job, but they represent the actual members of the Tectonic Theater Project, headed up by playwright Moises Kaufman. They actually conducted interviews in Laramie with all of the residents of Laramie that they could find, and uh, these are people from all walks of life who were affected by Matthew's death one way or the other. The story exposes the small town bias that there is there. Uh, this is the home of the University of Wyoming. It's a place that's uh, unfortunately uh, still filled with some prejudice and homophobia. At least it was when the play was written. Most of the interviews, of course, uh, it's interesting, uh, uh, represent many of the various uh, segments of the LBGTQ community. So they are affordably really uh, uh, shaken by what they see. It's a true ensemble work, though. I wish I could uh, acknowledge everybody's uh, uh, contribution to it. It's really an ensemble piece. It runs two more weekends, and it's going to be running over at the um, uh, Timothy K. Baker uh, Theater, the stage there at Delgado Community College. Uh, at times, this is raw and unsettling, but it's always pertinent and just as valid as it was when it first premiered 19 years ago. I recommend it heartily again. Meanwhile, Southern Rep is getting ready to open up its season next week. And they're doing so with the presentation of Lucas Nath's A Doll's House Part Two. This is fresh off Broadway. Uh, this continues the Henrik Ibsen play, where uh, if you remember uh, the way it ends, uh, the, uh, the, uh, if you will, the, the main counterpart of it, the main person in it is Nora. She basically leaves the family. And of course, this is when she returns some 15 years later. It'll be presented um, at Southern Rep's brand new home on Bayou Road, which I cannot so wait to see. Exciting. Ah, that is the so. former, of course, St. Rose de Lima Church. Exactly, exactly. And, and a, a great, uh, you know, opportunity to see, uh, you know, a former church converted into a different kind of opportunity for people to come and become part of a community there on Bayou Road. And uh, again, I, I really uh, want to urge everybody to see this because it really is, uh, you know, unusual. This will be the, uh, essentially the regional premiere for this uh, Strike off Broadway. Uh, it was on Broadway only two years ago. Uh, lastly, I want to remind everybody about the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra. They're going to take that long road down Airline Drive to the Jefferson Performing Arts Center coming up this weekend, or it actually on, on I guess it's Thursday, and uh, that's October the 4th. And uh, they'll be able to uh, perform some works, uh, and you'll be able to find out how Beethoven's wife laughed.
Oh. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Beethoven's fifth will be on, on right. the scene. Uh, there you right. go. Okay. Yeah, Thank goddess. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so uh, much. Now time for our picks of the week. Poppy. <laughs> Cocktails in the courtyard at the Degas House. Next Thursday, October 4th. Tickets are just $10, and they're guaranteeing an evening in a Parisian courtyard. And you actually get to see where Degas worked and lived. Yes, so in and case it you, benefits no one's, if the foundation that yeah. they have created. We've so done a great job. It ought to be a fun, fun time. Absolutely. Uh, the weather will hopefully be a tad cooler, right? But you can go inside. Garland, once again, your website, kiddo. Uh, RobinetteStudios.com. Okay. Alan. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I saw last week. I didn't get a chance to do the full review because we had so many other items to get to today. But this um, a particular The Shining Lives, it's a, it's a, uh, a program that's on the radium girls, if you will, uh, the um. ladies who were affected by radium uh, back in the 20s and 30s and, and unfortunately suffered some severe effects as a result of it. This uh, particular production uh, is directed by Christy Jacob Stanley and has a really outstanding performance by one person in particular, Josie Gochi. This is a young lady who really does and a where marvelous is this again? This is at the Underground uh, uh, Lower Depth Theater, if you will, for uh, Loyola University uh, mm -hmm. on the campus there. Also, coming up at the other campuses at, Loy uh, at UNO, at the Robert Nims Theater, Desdemona, play about a handkerchief, will be uh, telling the story of Othello, but not from the standpoint of Othello, but from Desdemona, the wife. Mm -hmm. And also, Green Table will be at Tulane on October the 2nd through the 6th. This is more or less a dance ensemble. Okay, thank you, Alan. <laughs> Lots of good stuff. <laughs> now for my picks. All right. We've got, uh, tomorrow is, did you know, World, okay, Cyan Cenotype Day, which is a 19th century photographic printing process that produces a cyan blue print. Go to the New Orleans Healing Center on St. Claude Avenue tomorrow where you can learn to make your own. Admission is free. Artist Emery Clark, we love Emery Clark, she will have a retrospective exhibit at Christwood Retirement Community's Art Gallery that's in Covington. The opening reception's tomorrow evening. And the exhibit will run until October the 27th. There'll be a 70s themed party called Staying Alive with a costume contest and dance off next Wednesday night at Southport Hall. The event presented by the local Women's Council of Realtors benefits the New Orleans chapter of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Don't miss singer Anaïs St. John in two encore performances of her recent show, Lulu White, Queen of Storyville. That's at the Little Gem Saloon on South Rampart Street next Friday and Saturday. Go to Ticketfly.com. Members of the band The Cold will be inducted into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame Friday a week at The Willow. Go to cold.eventbrite.com for just $10 tickets benefiting charitable organizations. And looking ahead, an evening of desire, which will be here at the WYES Corman Performance Studio will take place October the 9th. Proceeds will benefit programs for next year's Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival. Presenting readings will be Nell Nolan. Francine Siegel, Leslie Castay, and Anae St. John, to name just a few of those talented folks. Visit uh, TennesseeWilliams.net to purchase your tickets, and Poppy and I will be the official greeters. <laughs> thank you all so much, thank and thank you for watching. Good night. Ha, ha, ha.